But the long-awaited safety and knowledge test has finally been released. So who needs to take it and who doesn't? Stick around for the answers. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm JR the Travel and Tech Guy. If this is your first time here, we feature videos on how to get started in RC hobby, how to choose the best gear to get the most bang for your buck, and we also travel around to different flying events to show you the sights and sounds of what this hobby is all about. And if that interests you, please consider giving a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, click on the bell notification so you won't ever miss another episode like this. Let's jump right into it. Unless you've been living under a rock past couple of days, you've probably heard the word trust being thrown around. Trust stands for the Recreational UAS Safety Test. The Knowledge and Safety Test is a congressional mandate in the FAA Reauthorization Act of 2018 that says that all UAS users must pass this test in order to fly recreationally in our nation's airspace. So here are a few things that you need to know about trust. First and foremost, it is an absolute free test. That was one of the stipulations the FAA said to potential testing providers that they will not charge for this test. So if you end up on a website that's going to charge you for it, you need to bounce from it. Currently, I'm aware of three different providers that are administering the trust. One's going to be the Academy of Model Aeronautics, or AMA, UAV Coach, as well as Pilot Institute. And the tests usually last anywhere from 30 minutes to 60 minutes, just depends on how much network traffic is happening on those websites at that particular time you're taking the test. When I took the test on Tuesday, uh, there was a lot of people on there trying to take the test at the same time. The site was extremely slow and a couple times it crashed on me, but just a resend of the data and I was back up and going. Now there's no age limit on the test itself. You can be one years old all the way up to a thousand years old. It doesn't matter. If you're gonna fly recreationally, you're gonna to have to take this test. Now if you fly UAS as a part of your job or your business, you should have your part 107 license already and you don't need to take this test. But if you decide to fly that same UAS recreationally, then yes, you're gonna to have to take the test as well. The test itself is going to be pretty straightforward. There's only 23 questions with multi-choice answers. And if you get an answer wrong, you just choose another answer till you get the right one. So it's been designed where you cannot fail. Now, the one good thing is once you're done with the test and you got your certificate, you're done. You don't have to take the test ever again. Once you pass the test, you will receive a little certificate on the screen. Now, I would suggest that you download and keep a digital copy of it on your computer as well as print out a hard copy to carry on you either in your wallet or in your field box or bag so that in case you are stopped by someone from the FAA or from law enforcement looking to see if you've taken a safety test, you can pull it out and show them. Now, if you happen to lose your certificate, there's no way to recover it. The testing providers do not store any of your information on their sites. The only thing they do is record a token number that is sent to the FAA. And so in the event you get stopped by someone from the FAA or law enforcement, they can match that token that's up on your certificate with what the FAA has in their records. Let me know down in the comments if you've already taken the test. Did you find it easy? Did you have any trouble with the sites? Uh, or did you just breeze right through it? I'd love to know. All right, let's set up a scenario. You go to the store, you buy little Johnny, who's six years old, a drone. And let's say it's a little bitty old drone. Does he have to take the test? Do you have to take the test? Well, the answer is simple. If you're gonna fly it, you have to take the test. If little Johnny's gonna be flying it, he has to take the test as well. But you can give him some adult supervision while he's taking the test so that he gets his certificate, and if you're going to fly, you get your certificate. So what are my thoughts on having to take a test just to fly recreationally? For me, it's just a blip on the radar. If it pacifies the FAA, so be it. I'll take the test. takes a few moments out of my time. I get the certificate. They're happy. I'm happy. I'm flying. Who cares? Is it another step in the demise of our hobby? Not by a long shot. We faced challenges before, and we'll face challenges going ahead that always try to attack our hobby, but we as a community of unmanned aircraft pilots, whether you're part of a community-based organization or not, as long as we collectively come together, we can protect our hobby. 
And I guess that's about all I've got to say on it. So until next time, I'll see you at the field.